So, hello everyone. Uh, this is my first time in Riga, and I'm very uh, happy and proud to be uh, there with you today. Uh, so, uh, I'm already introduced, thanks a lot. Um, people perhaps know me more because of the Apache Groovy programming language. Uh, I've been working on that for, for a long time, and uh, about a year and a half ago I joined Google. Uh, I'm, I'm playing with lots of the technologies that Google Cloud provides, and I spent a bit of time with the various uh, APIs which are available. Vision API, Speech API, etc., and that's uh, going to be uh, the the core uh, part of this uh, presentation. So, uh, if you want to uh, look at the slides afterwards, I created a, a little Bitly link. Uh, so, devternity dash ml uh, it should be easy to remember. Uh, if you want to look at the slides afterwards. So, um, who heard about AlphaGo? This uh, new uh, in our artificial intelligence that managed to beat uh, the world champion uh, at the game of Go. Uh, if you look back uh, in time when uh, Deep, Deep Blue actually beat uh, Gary Kasparov at chess, uh, the, the approach taken was to uh, actually teach the rules uh, to some programs um, and they would be using brute force to evaluate uh, and it's algorithms defined by humans, uh, and brute force would go through all possible search paths and to see, okay, is this a better move than another one? Um, it worked for chess, but it couldn't have worked for Go, because with Go there are many more possibilities, and the search tree for possible moves is just huge. And there was no, or at least not enough uh, power anyway in that day to, uh, to do something like this at that scale uh, for, for Go. What's interesting today with AlphaGo and the, 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 the other variants like Go, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, AlphaGo Zero or whatever it's called, uh, an even better Go program, um, it analyzed uh, an artificial intelligence, neural networks actually analyzed existing games and figured out the rules of the game. Uh, so there was not a human saying, okay, this is a legal move, this is an illegal move, or this is a good move, this is a bad move. But instead, uh, some virus-sized neural networks analyzed the game and figured, oh, this looks like a good move, or this is the kind of stuff uh, I'm, I shouldn't be doing. So it's a really different approach to uh, actually programming manually, designing algorithms for the evaluation function and, and things like that. It's a totally different approach. Neural networks used in AlphaGo and uh, the, the stuff I'm going to show you. Um, neural networks is really not new. Uh, the, the field of artificial intelligence um, dates back uh, several uh, decades ago. Uh, but in the uh, end of 70s and 80s, uh, there was what they call the AI winter, the uh, artificial intelligence win winter. Uh, in spite of the fact that neural networks were invented uh, already, uh, didn't yield the results um, researchers were, were expecting. Uh, and so it was a bit disappointed. But um, with ongoing research on neural networks, as well as with more labeled data sets to learn from, and uh, the scalability of you know, uh, GPUs, CPUs, plus clouds of servers with those uh, CPUs and GPUs, uh, we've managed to make uh, neural networks really practical. And with the more data those networks were getting, the, the better uh, the networks were getting at a particular uh, task. So that's how we actually um, put back uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning and uh, neural networks back on the front uh, scene, uh, thanks to more labeled data sets, which is very important to uh, improve the, uh, the weights of the little neurons, um, and uh, as well as more compute power. Just to take a, a first example of where it's uh, put to, to good use, um, Google Photos. Uh, so whenever I take a picture, it's uploaded uh, to my Google Photos account. And uh, if you wanted, okay, I want to show uh, pictures of my dog to uh, my friend. 
So I'm going to open, uh, let's say, before uh, neural networks integrated in, into that. Uh, before, I would have had to go through all and flick through all my pictures and say, okay, where, where is there a picture of my dog? Or you could have imagined, okay, tagging manually all the pictures you, you're uploading to say, okay, there's a dog in, in this one, uh, etc. So searching for something particular which is in your pictures, uh, you would have had to, you know, look through the pictures uh, yourself or uh, put labels, which is not very friendly because you want things to be uh, automatic. But instead, you can uh, ask Google Photos, okay, um, search for dogs in, in my pictures. And you can actually do it via voice as well, so you can say dogs, uh, the word dogs uh, with, with my voice. It's going to analyze the the speech, what I've said, to recognize the, the word that my dog's here, but my, my query. And then there's uh, the ability that uh, some neural networks, networks have to actually see what's inside the pictures. So that's the, the vision uh, API. So it's going to return all the pictures within which uh, there's uh, a dog. So it's a concrete use uh, to improve you know, the life of the, the consumers and users of that application uh, to be able to find uh, pictures directly without uh, manual flicking through the pictures or uh, manual la labeling. And machine learning is really used in tons and tons of products uh, at Google. So these are some of the products where uh, it's being used. I mentioned Google Photos, but um, things like Google Music, oops, uh, Google Music for uh, music recommendation, etc. There are really many places where uh, it's put to good use. Uh, inbox, Gmail Inbox, for example, for creating, uh, generating uh, canned responses uh, to incoming emails, uh, or you know, inside YouTube, uh, there's um, also the ability to find what's inside the, the videos and find recommendations of similar videos, etc. All those services actually uh, take advantage of um, machine learning. And if uh, so, the, the figures I haven't updated them uh, recently, so it's uh, till the end of 2016, but. Um, at Google, we have one huge monolithic uh, repository of code, and you can search through uh, all the products and services which are um, uh, developed by Google. And you can actually search for the uh, uh, neural network description files through the sources across all the, all, all the products and services. And there's uh, clearly a kind of exponential growth of usage of uh, uh, model description files for defining the, the neural networks, um, which proves that there's really a big, uh, th and even in uh, internally, there's a big incentive to um, en encouraging all engineers to uh, go through training on machine learning, etc. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, so if if I want to become a real super expert in uh, everything neural networks. I, I can follow some uh, internal training, which is uh, really nice. Um, and uh, Sundar Pichai, the, the CEO of uh, Google, uh, said that we're really shifting from a mobile-first approach where all the products should be mobile-friendly, etc. To um, So it doesn't mean that uh, new products shouldn't be mobile-friendly, obviously, but it's in addition to being mobile-friendly, all the products somehow should have uh, some intelligence in them in order to uh, provide more value to the, the users. So it's a strong incentive uh, inside Google to improve the products by the use of machine learning. And I'm going to focus a little bit on uh, what the, uh, the Google Cloud Platform provides, and as well as the, our open source efforts in, in this um, area. Um, on the Google Cloud Platform, there are existing trained models uh, for speech recognition, vision recognition, etc., nat natural language understanding. Uh, on the other side of the um, spectrum, uh, you have the open source uh, project TensorFlow, uh, which is used by those uh, machine learning APIs as well under the hood. And in the middle, there's also a platform for uh, training your models and also doing the predictions with those uh, machine learning models. And this is the, the cloud machine learning engine. Uh, that I'll very, very briefly uh, mention. So if you want to, uh, because training um, 
new new models takes uh, a lot of time, lots of CPU and GPUs, etc. Uh, you can scale that learning uh, by doing this within the, uh, the the cloud machine learning engine. So uh, here are some of the services, uh, APIs, and tools that we're going to speak about. Um, and first, uh, I'm gonna we're, uh, let's say uh, let's explain a tiny bit about uh, neural networks. Uh, neural networks, and especially regarding deep uh, neural networks, and when we say deep learning, deep neural networks, it's the fact that we use uh, neural networks that are layered. So the input layer at the bottom is going to take, so for example, we want to analyze pictures uh, to know whether there are cats or dogs in them. Uh, the input layer takes the, the raw pixel of the image, then higher levels uh, are going to progressively see some particular features inside how those uh, pixels are correlated somehow to form perhaps an eye, uh, a tail, the fur, uh, the, so the texture of the fur, etc. And ultimately, the, the very latest layer is going to say, OK, this is a cat or this is a dog. And uh, so there are some um, tools for looking at what uh, networks actually uh, see uh, somehow visually. And you can see that the higher you get, the higher, um, let's say, the features of what is being recognized uh, will be higher up the, the, the layer. So you will recognize parts of a cat, etc. And the, the collection of those parts uh, will make the, uh, the network understand, OK, this is a cat or this is a dog. So this is very brief uh, explanation of how it works. So if you wanted to do that, um, le let's imagine you wanted to do a, a human power de detection or actually def designing yourself um, an algorithm to recognize perhaps fruits, for example. In instinctively, you might say, OK, so how, how would you actually recognize uh, an apple from an orange? Color, okay, color. But let's say I'm giving you a slightly different picture. Okay, so the shape, it's round, etc. Uh, and the texture, the texture is interesting. But for example, if you look at the texture of a mango, uh, it's also kind of like the same texture as the orange, and the colors are also red and green. So it, it's not, and and the shape, the shape is a is a better is a better better thing. Although I'm sure you could find some e oddly uh, shaped uh, apples and, and so on, so you could always find some counterexamples. But yeah, that's um, that, that, that's a good start. Perhaps something uh, that's even harder uh, or easier, at least to um, to recognize, like a dog versus a mop. I mean, uh, there's no confusion, right, to be had. But if you look at the common door kind of dog. Okay, so <laughs> this kind of mob. Uh, so do you think that it's that easy to say, okay, the shape or, you know, the texture, etc.? Uh, so it's not that easy. So that's why we train uh, neural networks to recognize really tons of uh, things. But we, of course, need tons of labeled data to be able to uh, learn from uh, the labels. Okay, this is a dog, this is a mob, this is a dog, this is a mob. We'll come back to that example la later on. So photos, that's a thing, but what about video, audio, text understanding, etc. So we're going to look at uh, the, the machine learning APIs. Uh, the machine learning APIs are available as uh, REST APIs that you can call, but there are also SDKs for various languages, Java, Python, etc. Uh, so it really depends on how you want to uh, take advantage of, of them. Uh, let's start with the vision API. So the Vision API is able to do label detection to see what's inside a picture. Uh, you've got face detection, so you, you see where the picture, the, the, the faces are in the picture. OCR to recognize what's written in the in the pictures. 
explicit content detection. I'll let you guess what it's uh, about. Or landmark detection to know uh, where was this picture taken and also finding logos in pictures. So let's uh, have a look at like the, the JSON um, payload which is written by the, the REST API. But if you use a, an SDK, you, you have uh, some data structures to, to look into. So this, this is a picture from uh, some of, of my colleagues. For example, uh, there's quite a bit of information, like the position of the eye, etc. Whether the person has got some something on on his uh, or her hair. Um, you also see uh, here the uh, joy like likelihood. So is the person happy? The angle, etc. So there's there's lots of uh, information provided there. Landmark detection. Do you know where this has been taken? No, not London. Another guess? So I've, I've heard Paris. But interestingly, it's actually not Paris uh, because in um, there's a casino uh, and Paris hotel in Las Vegas, yes. And the, um, the, uh, the, the Vision API, the, the Google Cloud Vision API, actually recognized that it's not the Eiffel Tower from Paris, but that's the one at the, uh, the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. So it's quite subtle because, I'm, I mean, the first time I saw the picture, uh, well, I immediately recognized the Eiffel Tower, and then I felt, okay, there's something weird below the Eiffel Tower, which doesn't look like what I remember from the actual Eiffel Tower. And interestingly, um, there's uh, the um, latitude and longitude, which, which is also available, which, uh, which is handy. And some new features which were added recently, things like crop hints to know if you can crop the picture uh, in a nice way, uh, web annotations, uh, I'm going to dive into that one, and the, some improvements in uh, text recognition uh, inside pictures. Uh, an example uh, around web annotations, the, uh, this car, that's the Ford Anglia, that's in the Harry Potter movie. And uh, it's recognizing, okay, it's a Ford Anglia. There's an entity ID, which is a, a kind of identifier, uh, uh, which is used to uh, look up also information from Wikipedia, for example. But, uh, uh, you're going to see the, the, the link. Um, it understands that it's a picture that was taken at the Art Science Museum in uh, Singapore. And it's part of the Harry Potter uh, books uh, series. And uh, web annotations also give information around where this picture was uh, uh, coming from. So it finds that, OK, it's a picture uh, that can be seen uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, like here, there's a Wikipedia link. Um, it's uh, someone used some cropped uh, versions of that picture on that website or uh, some other pages with that picture uh, inside. Uh, what's interesting there is that, for example, if you uh, publish pictures or have users publish pictures on your website, you could also detect that kind of things like, okay, it's not uh, the picture, the, it's probably not that person who took the picture or something like this. Um, and it's, uh, and the, um, I'm not really showing that, but the fact that you can also see uh, if the content of the picture contains things like, you know, nude people, etc. So you can avoid people uh, uploading uh, some pictures you, you wouldn't want the other users to see, uh, which can be handy. Uh, I wanted to do just a quick demo. Uh, so something uh, I haven't mentioned yet is that if you go on cloudgoogle.com, uh, then you can click on products and then machine learning. Uh, there's um, uh, an explanation of all the of those APIs. And for example, so where is it? The vision API here. I'm going to try with a couple of pictures that I have. Uh, where, where are they? Uh, projects, DevTurnity pictures. So let's say, let's look at this one. You recognize this uh, picture. So it's going to analyze it and see what's uh, recognized. So, uh, what? No, yeah, by file name, yeah. <laughs> no, but for example, so it rec recognized the house of the black heads as part of the uh, the labels uh, of things that were recognized. But it also it also managed to find you know where it is on 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 Google Maps. So I trust 
Google Maps to <laughs> know where it is. Upside down, uh, that's a good question. Uh, how can I do that? Uh, so let me first show uh, <laughs> uh, so the labels, the things that, that were found, uh, that it's in Riga. Don't know why Vilnius, but well. Uh, is there some text? Oh, this one can be surprising because sometimes in pictures, it finds some weird text, which I'm really not sure, some patterns in the, in the picture. Uh, properties, some colors, safe search, so there's no adult uh, content or anything. And you can see the, the JSON. So uh, perhaps I can, let's open a uh, preview and see if I take my picture and turn it upside down. That's a good, uh, uh, no, projects, dev pictures. Okay, this one. And I'm going to turn it down, file, uh, yeah, I can save it anyway, it's not critical. Uh, let's try again, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good test actually, I like it. So let's see, let's, uh, hey, yeah, I think it, it found the same things, so not bad. <laughs> I actually had another picture I wanted to show for the, the spoofing, you know, when you put uh, stuff on, on pictures, uh, additional text. So do you know uh, who this person is? Varishnikov, and he's born in Riga. Riga? Yeah. Uh, so what, what's interesting there, um, so you can see things, uh, uh, properties, no, where is it? Uh, web, uh, no, safe search. So there's spoofing, very likely, because I added some text on top of the image. And uh, uh, and I think properties, no, where is that? Document, yeah, so it recognized the, the text, and uh, yeah, in, in the web entities, it, re it recognized that it's a picture of Barishnikov. Okay, so that's it for this one. Next. Uh, and uh, if I uh, tried the <laughs> dogs and, and mops, uh, it did a pretty, so my, my um, colleagues who found those pictures uh, took the pictures and tried them on the, the Vision API. And it actually does a pretty good job. So, so this one is clearly a dog. This one is clearly some kind of tool, a broom and a mop. Um, the other, th there are actually two pictures in there. The, the one here, uh, it recognized that it's some kind of fur. So it was a, really a dog picture, but it recognized some, some fur, but it didn't really recognize the kind of dog. And for this one, uh, it thought it was some kind of textile. So it, this one is more wrong than the other ones, I guess. But it's not that bad. At least it recognizes that you know, it's some, some stuff uh, which is textile. Natural language API now. So in, with this API, you can extract entities, see what the, the sentence is about. You can do sentiment analysis, and you can also analyze the structure, the grammatical structure of text. So for example, in this uh, sentence, uh, so Joanne Joe Rowling uh, has got some pen names, J.K. Rowling, or even Robert Galbraith. And it's actually able to recognize that those three things are names of a person, and that's the, actually the same person. That's uh, Joanne Joe Rowling. Um, and for British there, it's recognizing that it's uh, about a location the United Kingdom, and Harry Potter, it recognizes that it's uh, a character, a person uh, from, uh, from the books. The sentiment analysis, uh, it's interesting because you can see whether a sentence is positive. So if it's positive, the score is going to be uh, between 0 and 1. If it's negative, it's going to be between 0 and minus 1. The magnitude is how strong the sentiment is. Like, is it really strongly positive or strongly negative? Um, and uh, the other thing, which is a recent feature, I might try that directly here on the natural language page. Um, so the, 
the the sentiment is for the whole document, but you can have uh, entity level analysis. So, for example, if I if I said the food is awesome, oh some, but the service is awful, uh, awful like this. Uh, it's able to recognize. Let's see if I'm getting that right. It's able to recognize that the for the food the the score is really positive. But for the service, it's minus 0 0.9 because the service was awful. So instead of having just the, the full uh, thing, which is kind of in, in, in between, uh, neither neutral, neither positive, neither anything, uh, you can also look at the, the parts of a sentence to see the, the, the sentiment. And the syntax part is also interesting. Uh, because you can really see the structure, the grammatical structure uh, of the, uh, the, the, the different uh, words. And no categories, I'm not sure what categories is about. Oh yeah, for beat, oh yeah, there's a new thing as well uh, that I forgot to mention. It's uh, for at least longer text, text. Uh, it's able to figure uh, if it's a, a journal article or if it's a food a recipe review or something. But this, this sentence is probably too small to, to, to trigger that. Okay, uh, sentiment. The syntax, yes, and the demo. Now the speech API. So the speech API is able to let you uh, transcribe from 80 different languages by recognizing the, the speech. So I'm going to go straight with a little demo that I've done. Or perhaps I can explain the steps first. So in this uh, demo, I'm actually going to use um, the natural, languages, uh, natural language API as well in, ad in addition to the speech API. So my little Example should be uh, here, or I, c I can show you um, just the, the the script. I'm, I, I really wrote that using a, just a bash script. So what I'm doing, I'm recording a sentence, uh, my voice, with a tool called Socks. I'm copying that uh, that file uh, on the the Google Cloud storage uh, for so that the um, the speech API is able to to retrieve it. Um, there, there's also a real-time uh, streaming capability, so you can push stuff real-time. But here, I'm just uploading a, an audio file. And then, um, where is it? So, uh, and, and you'll see with the, the output uh, anyway. So the thing that I did is that I took the, so it's uh, some JSON content from the Devternity website, because I wanted to do a kind of search, a voice search tool to find talks about a particular topic from uh, sessions happening here at Devternity. And I did a little uh, groovy script, uh, because I uh, you know, <laughs> love groovy, uh, to actually look through the, um, the, the, the data, which is in that event.js uh, file, to find, so I'm trying to find if some keyword is available in the description, in the title, in the tags, of some of the some of the talks. So let me show you. So if it works with the microphone on, um, okay. So this is it. And uh, yeah, I forgot to say. And I'm using the once the speech is recognized, I'm analyzing uh, the speech to see uh, the topic I'm interested in. So let's try something uh, like this. Is there a presentation about machine learning? So it's been. Recorded. I'm uploading that audio file to Google Cloud Storage, and then if the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi worked fine earlier when I tried. Yeah, now it's working fine. So I'm sending this query. So well, it goes a bit fast afterwards. Let me slow down a bit. It's been uploaded. I'm going to call the Cloud Speech API uh, with the URL of uh, my file. So I had a, uh, an existing project uh, within which I enabled Cloud Storage. So I've put it there. Then I, I used the Cloud Speech API uh, to recognize what's inside. And it recognized, OK, is there a presentation about machine learning? Confidence. So it's, re it's really pretty sure that it, in it understood that. Then the text recognition part, uh, I'm using the natural language API to see what's in Inside. And what I'm really interested in is basically what's after this about word. Uh, so I'm really interested in that part. So I'm really looking for, so this is what the, the natural language API returns. Uh, quite a bit of information, the, the, whether a word is singular, etc. And, and 
sentiment analysis. I'm not sure it's very useful here, but okay. So it found those words, machine learning. So the, the keywords I'm interested in are machine learning. And my little groovy script went through all the existing talks and it found one talk, okay, Guillaume Lafour speaks about machine learning intelligence at, um, at Google scale. So this is a, a quick combination of speech and a natural language understanding. And it's fairly uh, straightforward to do. So there's quite a number of lines here, but it's uh, because of the nice colors and echo uh, comments. I'm also using some tools like JQ to analyze some uh, JSON payloads, which is pretty handy, plus some uh, tools to uh, find just the, the stuff I'm interested in. Okay. So that's it for this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, another uh, product, um, which was actually a company that Google acquired uh, a year ago, um, uh, the, it was called API.ai, uh, but it was renamed uh, Dialogflow recently. So it's a new tool for building uh, chatbots, basically, as for natural and rich conversational uh, experiences. So there's a, there's a console, uh, Dialogflow, um, where you can actually enter the kind of request the a chatbot can receive, and it's using uh, natural language understanding to figure out, okay, what's inside this, um, um, th those sentences. So we have um, different concepts. So you have intents, that the kind of actions that are recognized by the platform. Entities, that's like uh, classes, if you will, in programming language speak. Uh, it's a class of things, so it's a type of uh, objects. So for example, in uh, at the bottom here, uh, I recognize that I'm speaking about food, so cheeseburger, Big Mac, Coke, etc. And it automatically recognizes that. Uh, perhaps I'm the, the best thing is to show you that. Uh, so I have, I did a workshop uh, with various examples of, so let's look at uh, which one. Uh, the one for booking a hotel. Yeah, so for example, I define different samples of uh, things a, a user can say, okay, book four nights for three per person, or uh, perhaps I could find some kind of variant. Uh, reserve uh, uh, three star hotel for two. Uh, for two nights. So let's see if it's recognizing. Yeah, uh, it's recognizing. So, but I, I, I define some parameters that that I have, uh, and the which are actually entities. So it found okay three star. That's my star variable. Two the number of person, and the other two it's the number of nights. And there's a, a place where so I can save it, um, where I can try some stuff. And what's interesting is there's some fuzzy matching. Uh, even if I use something like, um, let's say, something that's not part of the four examples, I uh, I would love yeah, to uh, reserve a hotel for two persons or something like this. So let's see if it's going to recognize. Yeah, what's interesting is that it recognized that it's the right intent of booking a hotel. Uh, the, the, this is what you see here, it recognized the intent. However, there were some missing variables. So for the variables which are required, I added some prompts which are additional questions to complete the, the query. So like uh, for how many perso persons, how many nights. So for two, uh, I can say two nights. And uh, it got the, the, the rest of the information. Booking a three stars hotel for two persons for two uh, nights. Um, so it's pretty uh, pretty clever. Um, and what's interesting, so it was back in my slide there, there are uh, different integrations uh, which are available. So if you want to create a chatbot for Twitter, for Skype, for Telegram, Slack, etc., you can uh, do that. There's a, an integration uh, which is available. You can also do uh, a Google Home, a Google Assistant integration. There are SDKs and REST APIs that you can use. And um, yeah, since I have just 10 minutes, uh, I'm not going to do another demo, but uh, I had a, a demo with the Google uh, Assistant integration. 
Uh, I can tell you more about that later on if you want. Uh, so the demo, that's uh, the other one. Um, or perhaps I can just show you uh, because I really want to do it. But I, I, I will need a volunteer from the audience someone who's fit enough, uh, because I, I did one little, so where is it, uh, squat. I did a fun little experiment where um, uh, you can uh, do some squats on stage. So I need a volunteer for 10 seconds. Uh, and I'm going to show you on the Actions on Google uh, console, that's where you can test uh, an, an, an app, an action on the, the Google Home, the, 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 the Google Assistant on your phone, etc. So anyone wants to try a volunteer to do some squats? Yes, come. <laughs> so I'm just going to, uh, perhaps I'm going to, I don't know if there's the sound that's working, let's see. Uh, ah. How many seconds? Ten seconds? Okay. <laughs> Twenty seconds. Let's go. Uh, so, wait. Ready for 20 seconds of squats? Go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's interesting, so I'm not showing the, the whole uh, demo, uh, but what's interesting is that I created the, the audio for the TikTok and then the applause at the end <laughs> um, with the Google Cloud function because whenever uh, there's some business logic, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, you can go, you, you can go back. So the, the thing is that you can uh, enable some business logic. So whenever some intent is recognized, like booking a flight, etc., booking a hotel uh, or doing some squat, you can uh, call a URL somewhere uh, to actually do some business logic. And the business logic I had was to create the audio for 20 seconds of TikTok, TikTok. So, well, that's about it. <laughs> uh, and then you can deploy that and have that kind of application available on your, uh, your phone if you, if you want. Okay, translation API. So this one, um, it's one of the oldest APIs we have. Uh, so it works for, um, I don't know, 100 plus languages. Um, they are, uh, for example, if you book something through Airbnb, uh, people give uh, put comments uh, on on the uh, on the website for a particular uh, place, and actually you can see the translations from all the languages in your language, which can be helpful. So Airbnb is using that. So you've seen the uh, you've already used it on on the on the Google website, likely. And uh, yeah, because I didn't show so much code, I wanted to show at least one sample. Uh, so we've got SDKs for the various, um, the various, uh, well, some key languages like Java, Python, etc., uh, C Sharp, and whatnot. And this is how easy it is to call the the, the translation API. And uh, recently, we improved the translation API uh, by using uh, uh, some new ways uh, instead of. Uh, uh, because before it was more of a kind of statistical model for translation, whereas now it's a neural network based uh, machine translation and uh, it really improved the quality of the, the translation. So uh, another example from the Harry Potter book, um, things like uh, uh, words like uh, necklace uh, to describe the, someone with a short neck. Uh, it's not someone who hasn't got, uh, a, you know, <laughs> a neck, but well, uh, or what, uh, almost twice longer than usual. Uh, it's not so nice. Almost twice as long as usual is better, or sometimes it lost some context like he or she, etc. So it's slight modifications, but which make things uh, more natural to a human eye uh, reading the translation. Uh, video intelligence, so we did speech, we did images, but you can also have that for videos as well. So it's a, a pretty recent addition, uh, vision video, yeah, that's here. So um, there's, a, there's an example uh, with, oh, I'm not a robot, uh, at least I hope not. 
uh, let's say um, which one volleyball court uh, whoops I'm gonna remove the, the sound it's a bit loud uh, so it's gonna analyze this video and see what's inside the video uh, so it's a bit like the vision API but uh, for video so it takes a bit of uh, time to uh, go through it but you should see the uh, the labels appearing and as well as things like the shots so when there's uh, a different shot, different camera angle, etc. Uh, it's able to uh, find that as well, or to see things like is there some explicit content, etc. And uh, what the um, API exchange looks like. So it should be, yeah. So there's a, it's actually just one shot, so perhaps it's not very interesting, but it's going to see, okay, what's inside, what the, the kind of labels which are available, uh, or labels there, property. Uh, yeah, no, I, I should have used another video. This one is not very interesting. But at some point, it should be saying volleyball. Ah, didn't work. I don't know why. That's weird. Well, for uh, I've tried with some other videos for which uh, that was working better. But it gives you a, an idea. All right. Uh, video intelligence. Um, and it's able to do like the, the vision API to find uh, places, uh, the location, landmarks, etc. Uh, it's able to find some description of things. Okay, the, there's a portrait uh, in that video, and it's a, well, the, the, the different shots and so on. So it's like the Vision API, but, but for videos. But I, I'd like to finish with a few words about TensorFlow. So TensorFlow, that's the uh, open source framework that Google is using for all these kind of uh, uh, machine learning models. Uh, so it's available uh, for Python and C++, and there are also uh, experimental APIs for Java, Go, and some uh, contributed, uh, community contributed uh, language as well. Um, and it's able to do um, different kind of uh, models, so regres regression models, which are more like statistical models, as well as neural networks and deep learning, convolutional neural networks, for example, for pictures, or recurrent neural networks for analyzing uh, things like text, etc. So these are uh, available. And uh, uh, yeah, perhaps a very quick demo. One last demo here. Um, a colleague of mine did a um, an experiment to see if um, a recurrent neural network could learn to speak like Shakespeare. So it trained a neural network with all the Shakespeare plays and see if it uh, actually is able to uh, speak like Shakespeare. So he did several uh, runs through um, all the, the whole corpus of uh, text. And um, my colleague also created checkpoints to, to show how progressively it can improve. So the more it learns about the text, the more the, the quality becomes. So for example, here, uh, so we can start with the, the very basic one here. Um, Initially, once it's been trained, and then we use some randomness to generate the uh, some text. So let's see. Uh, initially, it doesn't work too well. Okay, and then uh, you train it more, and it's uh, able to recognize, let's say, words and structure of uh, sentences somehow. So if, if I run it again, uh, it's able to, okay, it looks more or less like some text. It's not too, too bad. And then really at the end of the training, so if we go with this one, so it's uh, the latest uh, training level, so after a few hours of training. And then it's really able to uh, generate text like Shakespeare. So, uh, I don't know, if there's something interesting, I'm, I'm going to just read a, like, some passage like Brabiak, <laughs> that's a weird name, the sadness of my lord to her in the seas that, we, that he shall stand and stand upon the best. So it looks pretty much like English, right? It doesn't mean anything, but at least you see that the, the neural network actually learned Okay, there, there are different people speaking, uh, there are some cues like someone enters the stage, etc. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool. And so if you want to train your own uh, machine learning models, because, okay, you can use the, the ready-made APIs, vision, speech, etc. But uh, for your own problems, uh, business problems, etc., you'd need your own uh, models. So you can run 
uh, train and run uh, the predictions with your models using uh, the cloud machine learning engine. So it's a, a service which is available as part of the, the Google Cloud Platform uh, to, to do just that. So I'm not going to show that uh, concretely because training something takes time, obviously. But know that it's available and it's going to scale the training of your uh, neural networks uh, way more than if you were doing that on your own servers, on your own machines, because you can see, okay, if you are ready to pay lots of servers in parallel with big GPUs, etc., you can do that. And if you have less time, less money, or, or more time and less money, uh, you can uh, you know, pay less, uh, make it run longer, but have a, uh, the, uh, the prediction uh, available. Right, so that's about it. We spoke about the various on the shelf APIs, video, vision, speech, natural language, etc. A few words about TensorFlow, the open source project, and the cloud machine learning engine. So these are the pointers uh, if you want to have a look at these more, um, more deeply. And that's about it. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, we have some questions in Slido. Cool. But I need to connect my phone because otherwise ah. I won't be able to read them. Okay. Let me check. So, uh, yeah, the, 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 most, the most popular question is how, how do you evaluate the importance of understanding the maths behind the machine learning in order to use the machine learning? Yeah. So if you use the, the ready-made APIs, vision, etc., you don't have to understand any math at all. That's, uh, that's totally fine. But as soon as you want to create your own machine learning models, using TensorFlow, uh, you kind of have to, to know the math. And not only the math, but more about like, okay, which kind of neural network should I be using? So this is the kind of stuff that you um, learn uh, by, uh, or from experience, because for example, recurrent neural networks was great for things like translation or text analysis, because you look, so recurrent neural networks kind of uh, looks at a, a window of characters, so it remembers what was seen before to better understand, okay, this is a word, this is a sentence, this is um, um, a, a paragraph, etc., to understand like the structure of the Shakespeare's plays. Uh, it understood the structure of uh, how people enter the, the scene, how they speak, etc. So the, the, yeah, you, you have to... There, I mean, there's a big gap between using ready-made APIs and then creating your own models. And yeah. it's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, a user who named himself Sneaky Bustard uh, is asking, uh, uh, what is the pricing model? How much does it cost? Oh, yeah, the pricing <laughs> model. Ah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, and I suck at this because I never look at the prices. Uh, it's um, you know, based on um, usage. Uh, so it's pay as you go. Uh, well, the, the pricing is available online somewhere. So I, I, I cannot really say or compare our pricing perhaps, I don't know. There, but there's certainly, oh yeah, but that's the whole pricing. Uh, so you, you'd have to have a look at the, uh, the website to, to mm -hmm. know about the pricing. But it's a really a pay-per-use um, approach. And for uh, the um, machine learning engine, uh, it's, it's uh, more like resources that are used. So if you use tons of servers, uh, tons of instances with the biggest GPUs that are available, of course, it's going to cost more. But okay. yeah. No, no price in mind, sorry. Uh, yeah, the next question is, uh, can Google's sentence analysis detect sarcasm? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> sarcasm. That, I think that's the next frontier, basically. You know, things like double negations, sarcasm, etc. it's very difficult for a, a computer to understand. So I think it's still uh, a research topic, even. So no, it's not able to recognize sarcasm, not yet. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do, do, do you use any quantum computers for... No, no, uh, any what, sorry? Quantum computers. Oh, so we've got some um, quantum computers uh, at Google, and uh, we're, we're really working hard on, on that topic. But do, do you use them to uh, but, train neural neural, neural but networks? But for uh, all, all, the, all the things, no, we're not using them. Okay. But we actually created our own CPU called TPU, Tensor Processing Units, which are uh, much more performant and cost-effective, etc., than GPUs 
and classical CPUs as well. So for example, for beating Alpha, uh, uh, for AlphaGo to beat the, the champion, uh, it was actually running on dedicated uh, TPUs, tensor processing units. So we created our own CPUs for running machine learning models. Yeah. Okay. And, and they are becoming available. I don't know if they are already available or they are becoming available to uh, everybody. For, for their use with the TensorFlow. Yeah, uh, and I think the last question, because uh, yeah, I don't want to keep you long away from lunch. Uh, so how do you check the quality of the translation API and what is the KPI of translation mm. improvement? Yeah, uh, so I, I'm, I'm not part of that team, so I don't know exactly how they do it, but they, um, the, the thing is that we, we have um, tons of linguists, uh, experts uh, around that, that actually do uh, double check what, what's uh, given. Or uh, recently there were, um, I, I don't remember the, the case uh, which recently happened, like uh, things like translation which were biased in the sense that, uh, let's say, uh, when you use a note in some languages, you could use a neutral pronoun. And once translated in a language with non neutral pronouns, it would decide to use he or she, for example. So uh, if, if it's, uh, so I don't have a good example because I, uh, let, let's say someone, someone's, he, someone is in the kitchen and, he, and, and, and is cooking, it might have been translated to uh, someone is in the kitchen and she is cooking. Come on, that's a bias. Why mm -hmm. not a man and, and vice versa? Mm -hmm. And uh, there are um, people who are looking very carefully at those things in order to improve the quality, but how as well the... Um, uh, what's generated is not biased. But the thing is that we have labeled data sets to work on, and those data sets are actually biased themselves. And the, the machine learning models actually learn somehow the, the bias. So there are people, uh, human beings, real human beings, who are there to assess the quality of translation, of stuff that is recognized, etc., to further improve the, the, the models. Okay, uh, I think we don't have time for questions anymore. So. Thank you. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks a lot.